All right, very good. Thank you. Good evening. Um, welcome to the Town Blanco Township Committee meeting, October 4th, 2021. This is via Zoom remote access, normally held at the Municipal Building, 770 Coopertown Road in Blanco, New Jersey. A roll call, please, Mrs. Lohr. Mr. Brown. Here. Mrs. Patrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olette. Here. Mr. Templeton. Here. Let's see, we have Mr. Schwab, our Township Administrator. Uh, Mr. Fox, our Township Engineer. Uh, Mr. Uh, Steve Raymond is sitting in pinch hitting for Mr. Heinold. Uh, Mrs. Lohr, Municipal Clerk. Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk. Mr. Fenimar uh, was on audio, I did hear him. Uh, Chief to Jeffy Desi DeSanto, and we have uh, Aaron Provenzano as our technical specialist this evening. Uh, flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Sunshine statement, Mrs. Lord. Please be advised the proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 edition. Written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. This meeting is via a Zoom virtual meeting platform. Um, the Advanced public comments will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail. And those that are received no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the published public meeting start time uh, will be acknowledged and read. Uh, members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting public comment sessions may either make their comments via the audio option or by typing their comment or question via the Zoom platform chat option. Um, Comments and questions should be submitted via the chat function during the time when the meeting is officially open to the public and read. The chat, Zoom chat function will be available when the meeting is open to the public for comments and questions and will otherwise be disabled during the meeting. Members of the public who are deemed to be disruptive as, as defined by NJSA 5 colon 39 may be muted after an initial warning for the duration of the public comment session or the remainder of the remote meeting session. And the agenda for this meeting is available on the township website at township.com Thank you. Very, very good. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, so let's see. First item on the agenda, uh, Ordinance 2021-18. This is amend amending Chapter 135, Governing Brush, Grass, and Weeds. Second reading by title only in a public hearing. Uh, hearing is now open to the public for comments, questions on Ordinance 2021-18 only. If you have a question or comment, uh, state your name and address, please. And uh, we'll try our best to answer your questions. Anything coming in in the chat, Mrs. Lohr? Uh, let me double check that. Let's go find my chat function. There it is. Uh, there is nothing in the chat at this time. OK. Hearing and seeing no comments from the public on this ordinance. Hearing is now closed to the public. Uh, motion, please, on Ordinance 2021-18, amending Chapter 135. Is that you, Christine? Yeah, I'll make the motion. Second. And uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, next item, ordinance 2021-19, amending chapter 234, governing rental property. This is the second reading by title only in public hearing. Uh, hearings now open to the public for ordinance 2021-19 only. Same rules apply. Any questions or comments? This is Laura. I do not see anything in the chat function at this time, and no one is indicating that they, by um, announcing their name and address. All right, hearing and seeing no comments or questions. Hearing is now closed to the public. A motion, please, on uh, Ordinance 2021-19. So moved. Second. 
Motion by Ms. Fitzpatrick, second by Mr. Olette. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Olette? Yes. And Mr. Templeton? Yes, thank you. Uh, next is Ordinance 2021-20, authorizing acceptance of access and construction easement over Block 1411, Lot 2, and Block 1500, Lots 1 and 1.01. This is the second reading by title only public hearing and public hearing. Uh, hearing is now open to the public on ordinance 2021-20 only. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, we, we completed the uh, legal description and the survey of the area we need. And as it turns out, we only need the easement um, on lot two. Block 1500. The other lots, we don't need the easement on. It's the same homeowner, but they're joining lots. I don't know if that makes a difference for the title or not. Mr. Raymond, do you have a... I know we received that this afternoon, The um, and we, we drafted the access easement all based upon that. Um, in, in, I think you could you could change the title to just reflect that, but I, I don't think that's a substantive change. I think we could proceed with the second reading, re reading and move forward tonight. Okay. So which uh, okay. lot number are we? It is uh, block uh, one four one one lot two. We're removing one, right? Yeah. Which one's being removed? The uh, block 1500 lots one and 1.01. .01. Okay. Okay. So the title for the record is authorizing acceptance of access and construction easement over block 1400 lot two. Is that correct? 1411. 1411 lot two. Correct. And, and, and then all references to block 1500 lots 1.01 .01 and 1.01 .01, uh, be stricken. Yes. Is correct. that the, the correct way to handle this? Co correct. Okay. Does anyone in the committee have any questions on that? Mr. I uh, yes, this is still Mr. McQuaid's uh, lot near the Rank Ocus Creek. Correct. It's, it's the lot that actually has the house on it. The adjoining empty lots, um, the property line is actually further away than we thought, so we don't need an easement on those lots. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for the clarification. Well, any other questions from the committee on this? I think that we're still open to the public right now. All right, hearing and seeing no other questions and the uh, hearing is now closed to the public on ordinance 2021-20 with the amended uh, title authorizing acceptance of access and construction easement over block 1411 lot two. Uh, motion, please. So moved. Second. Second by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes, as amended. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thank you. Uh, reported advanced remote meeting comments or questions. The section is to acknowledge and read those comments and questions received by the municipal clerk in advance of the remote meeting, either via electronic email or written letter as required by NJAC 5 colon 39-1 as letter. Members of the public participating live in this meeting will be given the opportunity for comments and questions during the meeting in one or both of the public comment sessions. Excuse me. Meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions. Session one, this is wide open. Any comments or questions on anything? And Mayor, for, for the record, um, we received no advanced comments or questions uh, for this meeting. Uh, I do have a couple pieces of correspondence that came in this afternoon, and they will be, but they will be entered during the correspondence section. So if anyone else from the public has a comment or question, please unmute yourself and state your name and address. Hearing and seeing no comments or questions, anything in the chat pop up? Let's double check that. 
There's nothing in the chat. All right, thank you. Uh, at this time, a comment question section of the meeting is now closed to the public. Comments and reports, uh, professionals. Let's start off. Uh, start off with you, Mr. Raymond. The only thing that Doug had me uh, asked me asked me to note is that we did get the uh, recorded final judgment back on the two 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 four Burlington, the in rem foreclosure that was done. Uh, those that that was received back from the county for filing. Uh, they, we did also get the payment from, from Mr. White and that easement has been filed across his property. And with all that being done, then the deed um, to the HOA to get that property back to them has been has been filed. I don't believe we got the recorded those recorded deeds back yet, but but they've all been filed now. So that um, just waiting on those to get returned and that will be taken care of. And, and that was all he had for me this afternoon or this evening. Good. Any questions for Mr. Raymond from the committee? All right, thank you, sir. Uh, let's see, Mr. Fox. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the uh, road program uh, that's, that's going on now, the 2021 uh, road program, the concrete work has all been completed. Uh, the contract is going to be coming out Wednesday or Thursday of this week uh, to start actually grading roads and, and paving. Um, they're gonna start on Third Street mill that out, grade it, and put base down, then move to Second Street, do the repairs there, and then they'll top everything probably sometime mid next week. Um, so there will be notices going out to all the residents um, tomorrow. As soon as the contractor is not sure if it's gonna be Wednesday or Thursday, he's, he's starting, but they, he will notify all the residents tomorrow. Um, it's the same contractor for both sections, correct? Correct. Yep, it's all one contract. It's just different funds. Okay. The uh, Field of Dreams parking lot. Um, we are going to. It's brought to our attention that there's there's a couple more cracks out there that I think we want to address. Um, so we are going to do that. We're going to mill those cracks out. Uh, they're a little bit wider. It's pretty subjective when you're out there trying to figure out what cracks to mill out, which ones just to seal. Um, but there was a couple of them I think should be done. And, and we are going to do that. We're going to mill those out um, and reseal it. And any other issues that are out there will be taken care of at that time. Uh, the public works driveway, I don't know if you've seen that. I'm sure you have. That's all been paved. Uh, that came out nice. And uh, John's got a nice little parking area for him now. And it's, it, that came out well. The um, the Cooperstown sidewalk uh, projects, there's two of those, the one in front of Town Hall and Public Works, um, which is basically township funds. And the other is uh, along from Hickory, or I'm sorry, from, uh, yes, from Hickory to Pennsylvania. And that's CDBG, CDBG money uh, combined with local funds. Uh, what we're doing is rather than putting those into one contract uh, because of the funding situation, we are going to get the public works and town hall sidewalk uh, plans done and at the bid so that could be constructed this year. The other sidewalk um, that's the CDBG money, uh, probably what we're, we're going to be getting on the plans, but weather permitting, it, it would make sense to actually do that in the spring after construction. Um, so by the time we get through the county approval and the uh, CDBG approval. Um, but but the one in front of the town hall and public works uh, was scheduled to get that uh, constructed this year, this this construction season. Okay. And lastly, uh, we had a meeting with um, the EP at the uh, Zubrug Mansion Seawall. Um, there were several members from the EP, uh, members from uh, Senator Singleton's office. Uh, the, the mayor, uh, Fern, um, and, and various other uh, involved uh, people with that project. The meeting went very well, and I'm, I'm sure the mayor will bring you up to date on that as well. But uh, as it turns out, the, the assistant commissioner who, who we've been dealing with all this time, who's been kind of indicating that we could put the seawall back in the original location, um, and then it changed when his staff 
uh, since they fought him on that. We're going back to, I just received a, a text message from him today. Um, and he, he actually started the text message with a smiley face. So that's a good sign, I guess. Um, and he said that he spoke to the commissioner. Um, and it, it looks very, very promising. Uh, the, the one thing that they're going to be looking for, which would pretty much make it go through, is there's about uh, 4,800 4, square feet, 4,800 square feet of area that we're essentially going to be filling in, where they wrote it away to get back to our original bulkhead line. They're going to want for mitigation, uh, the town to give up that same amount of area somewhere else on the township property. Um, for instance, it could be on Hawk Island. It doesn't have to be on our on that Zuba property. It could be anywhere in, in the township. And essentially what it is, it's, it's based on square footage. Um, it's simply that, that, that amount of 4,800 square feet. We would have to, to dig down and just make the ground level there below mean high water line. Um, and that would satisfy the requirement for the mitigation. So what we would be looking at is, is like I said, probably Hulk Island, but if there's if any other suggestions, um, feel free. We can look at, and, and essentially what we're doing is we're, we're the same square footage we're filling in, we're giving them back uh, in another location. Now we are filling in a lot more than that, um, volume wise. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's okay. It's, uh, it's volume wise, we're filling more than that, but the regulation is based on square footage. So we're filling in that whole bank area and all we have to do is dig out six inches of soil somewhere else, as long as the same square footage area is, is achieved. Um, so that's something, I, I, I think that's pretty much a, a I, I think they're gonna pretty much insist on that. Uh, and, and the reason why is their regulations the way certain people in, in D, at DEP interpret them is you can't have any net fill um, in, in the tidal area. They're being creative with us uh, because of the situation and, and, and actually a lot of common sense is being used this time, which is unusual for DEP, but, but they're using some common sense here. And they're, they're giving us an out essentially by doing this trade off, they're gonna allow us to do this and what it does is it basically doesn't set a precedent for someone else to just put a bulkhead in their old bulkhead line without giving mitigation. So it's kind of a way that they're saving face and getting and we're getting what we want. I, uh, I, I don't understand that, Harry. And in, in other words, we have to sign over property to them. Is no, that what they're asking? Well, no, you actually have to create it. You'll, you, we would we would go out and dig out soil along the riverbank somewhere else. And put it at the Zerbrook Mansion? No, you can do whatever you want. You can just, you haul it away, you do whatever you want with it. All you're doing is you're creating, by putting our bulkhead in at the old bulkhead line, they're losing surface water. They want that same amount of surface water someplace else. I, okay, I understand. We have to dig that much off of another piece of property that we have. Okay, and, I got and all it. we have to do is get below the high water line. We don't have to go as deep as Zubrug is. It's it's depending on the topography that we can find a spot. It may be like I said, digging out six inches of soil someplace. Yeah, um, this is a I I chuckle at this. Uh, I I think it's a good deal. Um, I, I'm glad it's square footage instead of uh, cubes, uh, uh, and. Uh, it's interesting that the that the area that they're asking to quote replace and mitigate is area that's been lost for the last 12 years that we've been arguing with them and they've been delaying this whole process. But anyway, um, yeah, I th it, it sounds like all John Fenimore needs to do is take his bucket loader out to one of our parcels on Hawk Island and scrape. And it's, you know, 4,800 feet sounds like a lot. It's what, two tennis courts, a tennis court, that's about it. Uh, so I, I think this is, this is agreeable and we're not, we're not, you know, feeding over something. We're just, we're just creating a, a thing for turtles and frogs. So. Mm -hmm. 
So the, the purpose of that is just kind of theoretical to let the water reach and backfill in an area because we're displacing it elsewhere? Yeah, they, they've been stuck for a long time on this. Uh, they're claiming that, that the, the area that's been washed away is now new habitat, that aquatic life now lives there. And uh, looking at it, you, you kind of have to have to laugh because it's, it's concrete rubble and brick rubble and tree roots and, and everything else. So, and, and as Mr. Fox is saying, uh, I, I think this is a small bone that we can send in their direction that um, will placate the hard-nosed uh, rule followers uh, uh, farther down in the, in the DEP bureaucracy that uh, as the assistant commissioner, when I was walking with them uh, at that meeting, he said, your situ we don't have rules that fit your situation here. Our rules are designed for new development and we really don't have rules that fit what you have here and what you're trying to do. And so uh, I, I think he's, he's taking this on as a personal uh, quest uh, or to get this done because it's needed. And I think we, we did a real good job convincing him and the other senior official, uh, uh, Colleen Keller, who's uh, in coastal land use regulation and development and so forth. Uh, I think they were, she was genuinely shocked at the, at the damage there. Uh, and how long it's been like that. So, um, I, 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 once again, but I think I think we made made some big steps there, getting them down there and getting them to look at it and get their feet dirty in the mud. So, Matt Bartlett has a nice big backyard. No, oh, I'm scraping away. <laughs> <laughs> and what about, what about all that? Yeah. Will that land up on West Avenue back along the cliff there? Would that, would that count? Yeah. How far you got to go? You got to go for the water to come in, right? It, it's got to go, right. We have to dig it below the mean high water line. Okay. Um, I, think, I think Hawk Island's probably a better site for that because the terrain, you, you don't have quite an elevation change and it'd be less digging for us. I think just to find one of the, the low spots and, and, and scrape that out and invite the uh, invite the tide in interesting okay sounds like a small exchange yeah no now, money it could be hard for john to get equipment back there it depending upon which section uh, that we own of hawk island we would choose because the way i feel about this i'll take my shovel and dig the, it out i don't care the, i mean the, it's, it's, the last i think the last lot that we uh, acquired is the point that certainly wouldn't be a good area i don't think what area are you thinking of harry have you made a decision i i, I have not like i said i just received the text okay. today um so i haven't had a chance to really look at it but what would the next step would be um if, if the township committee wishes um we would investigate that um as far as and, and come up with our, our recommendation of what to do then when we actually do the permit application it would have to be surveyed and we'd have to do a topography survey of that area and show them that we're lowering it x amount and the square footage equals to 4800 uh, and that required the permit application to put in a seawall at the original location bog stitch there you go bog stitch that's a good one they need to clean that out anyway that really needs to be, yeah. But there's also, their wildlife people are gonna have input on this as well. Um, it's not like we just go willy nilly and go dig something out, but they're gonna have to prove it as well. So it's gotta make sense. Um, okay. okay. Definitely can work on that. Anything else, Mr. Fox? Uh, that's all I have at this, this, this time. Excuse me, Harry, if I can. Do you want to touch on uh, Richard and Harry the uh, the flurry of emails this afternoon and uh, the thing from uh, Taylor Design Scott Taylor and, and uh, Steve Lennon on the sure, yeah we we can do that I also want but I wanted to mention to Harry um, in his report the Newton's Landing seawall headwall uh, repair the only thing you have on here is that Thor is waiting for seed to establish but apparently there's some damage to the asphalt trail that's got to be paved and the county's getting very nervous about the timetable on that 
Yes, and, and you I didn't list that. So I, I wasn't aware that you had asphalt work that Thor had to do asphalt work there. Yeah, yeah. The county is they're being pretty tough, but um, he scratched he scratched a couple spots on their asphalt, and they're they're not happy with that. So that has to be. They don't even want it repaired. They want it cut out and paved. Um, and we're looking at um, scheduling that for um, middle of next week. Weather permitting. Is that is this a change order? Is this is this going to be an issue? It, it's it's no. It, it it's it's his responsibility. Um, I'm not so so sure it's completely fair. Uh, given the situation that he actually looked at this project before they built their trail. Um, he did agree afterwards that when the trail was built that he would protect it and put boards over and whatnot. But but as as I think you know, there was some difficulty with the, the head wall when he started working on it. it. It collapsed and fell in and he had to bring a crane in and there was a lot more equipment there than he originally anticipated. Um, and, and I believe what they're asking for is a little extreme, but if they're making their contractor do the same thing, then 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 ours ours should. Um, but it, but it ultimately, yes, it's Thor's responsibility. So when when is he scheduled to do that then? Um, we're looking at mid next week. Okay. All right. And is the he, he's not going to have someone do it? Yeah, the Manhattan's Landing people are satisfied also, or they're just waiting for the grass to grow. Yeah, we're just waiting for the grass to grow, and then um, there's the, the the stone trail that that was there originally that cut through into Newton's Landing. Uh, basically, it became overgrown throughout the years. Um, it, it's barely even visible, and, and then from all the other construction traffic coming in and out, it kind of naturally shifted the trail over. Uh, the county is replacing that stone trail and i'm not sure exactly the location they're putting it but but when we're done our paving repair they're going to come in and, and and put in the stone trail back up into newton's landing okay all right so hopefully that'll be next couple of weeks we'll be done with that okay yeah that old right. trail's got some pretty good ruts in it from the, the truck traffic that uh, harry described yeah Okay. Yeah, and, and, and if you want, that's the our worst responsibility. The trail itself is. That's what it looks like. Can't see that. Yeah. That's looking up towards the end of Newton's Landing Boulevard between the basins. The cinder trail kind of tails off to the left out of sight, but there are the truck ruts. Yeah, that uh, looks. Be honest with that. That looks newer to me than than last I saw it. I don't know if someone else is driving down there. Whether it's. The, the, the contractor from the county. Yeah, or, well, I was out there yesterday. Yeah, I, I will go out and check it. We have pre-construction photos and um, anything that's door damage, he's got to fix. Yeah, all right. Okay. Uh, you want to talk about the Field of Dreams thing, Mike, that we were talking about? With well, uh, uh, I received a call from uh, uh, Scott Taylor and Steve Lennon this morning, and they're having, uh, they're getting worried. They Currently seated the event lawn area, and we're hoping for rain this week. And uh, there's the rain's kind of dropping out of the forecast. And uh, they, uh, Steve was proposing the idea of tapping into the existing, uh, I think the the line, uh, the irrigation line that goes to the softball field, is if I understand that correctly, uh, and putting in a two-inch tap and. Then there was some communication that occurred later with uh, the county, Matt Johnson, uh, to, to get some kind of uh, farm real irrigation system to unroll that and get some water on the uh, uh, on the new seating. Um, so I, I asked that they neither of them were able to attend tonight, uh, had other commitments, and so I asked them to compile uh, something that summarizes all that uh, because I was heading out for an appointment this morning and uh, asked that they copy both uh, both of you, Mr. Schwab and uh, Mr. Fox. Yeah. On, I forwarded uh, that on to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if sometimes people don't get a chance to see their last minute emails. We get too many emails in the two hours before the meeting. 
But I did. I see yeah, John I did. shaking his head. Yeah, I did receive them. Um, my question was, I thought we were putting another pump out there too, Harry. Wouldn't that help? Oh, absolutely. Um, the, the other that's a year two down the line. Pardon? Yeah, the other, the, that's, the other that's pump not going to happen until next year. Oh, okay. Help this week. We need we're it this week. Try to get water on it this in the next couple of days. I thought the pump may have already been done. No, we applied we for, that, for the grant. Um, uh, right, we've been uh, waiting for the grant. That. And we're waiting for that okay. answer. We haven't heard anything on that grant. Well, does anyone have a problem with uh, what, whatever methodology we use, whether to uh, tap into TLC is going to give a price. They're the ones who handle our irrigation there to do the two and a half inch tap and they have to build a little uh, pit for that and see if that works. And also if Steve can, Lennon can arrange with the county to borrow their quote water cannon, uh, we may need, uh, you know, a call to uh, uh, Mary Pat and get them to do that. And we may need to sign a hold harmless or some sort of little uh, agreement to make sure, you know, if we damage it, we pay for it. But if we can make something work, does anyone have any problems or objections? There are still funds left in the uh, county open space grant. We got the bid that Gerald's gave us was, uh, you know, five or 10% less than what the grant was. So there is some remaining funds to do a change order for this water. Uh, if anyone no has a problem, we'll move ahead and keep you posted. Yeah, makes sense. Are we splitting the cost with them? Or are we eating the cost? Well, that's a, that's a good question. I would suggest that uh, this was discussed as part of the bid package that, uh, if there was a need to do this kind of work, we'd have to pay for it. It's not something that one would expect that was not built into their bid that they were gonna to have to spend the money to uh, tap into our system. I don't think it's gonna be real expensive, well, but uh, it was not in the bid. That required them to provide the water. Well, there was an assumption that if they had to bring in some trucks on occasion, but I'm not aware from being at the pre-bid meeting and being at the pre-construction meeting, this was discussed and I don't think there was ever any intention that if we needed to have the significant uh, amount of water that uh, they were gonna have to pay the total cost. We don't know how much it's gonna be at this point in time. I don't suspect it's gonna be huge. Phil McFadden from Recreation just texted me and said, why don't we use the fire department and let them spray it? Because the quantity, according to, uh, uh, Steve Lennon, and the quantity that would be needed, they'd have to be out there on a regular basis doing it. I don't think it's not a one-time deal. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, it's not just one time there. What happened, they seeded it, the grass grew, but because of the way our summer went, both on our soccer field as well as here, a particular weed, I forget what it was called, uh, took over. And so they had to kill the weeds and reseed. And the assumption was by this time of year, we'd get enough rain uh, to get things going well obviously things are not working out as expected there was sufficient rain the, the project frankly was predicated on the assumption we get sufficient rain they had to do it in the spring soon enough catch the spring rains which they did but then it rained too much and then it got I don't know enough about that stuff but the summer kind of it was gr going great there for a while and then uh, the weather changed on it and created this weed situation so if the issue is, if, if the number is huge, obviously we have to negotiate that with the contractor. I'm not under the impression that we're talking about huge numbers, Harry, for them to do this. We're not talking about thousands and thousands of dollars to uh, do this tap, do you think? No, no, the tap, the tap would be probably $500 or something like that. Yeah, that, that's and so that it's on our well and, and we don't need to be irrigating the softball fields uh, at this point in time, so we can, in effect, use that for this area. Seems to me, I don't know. Yeah, yeah the only downfall is it wears its wear on the well. That's the only real downfall, and the electric to the well. Right. But it'd be running anyhow. It seems to be the, the you know for this two or three week period, whatever it is, that uh, it, it's not. We're not talking about big numbers here to create something that has a long term benefit. Yeah, I, I just have. 
problem when a contractor comes forward and, and claims that something's in a special circumstance or unforeseen and asks for a change order when in the landscaping business, weather and, and having not, it, not having the rainfall that you were hoping for isn't really unanticipated. So I, I feel like they should be on the hook for it. It would have been something factored into their cost. You know, it, 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 it may be that they will have no problem with it if it's that kind of number. Uh, but I do know we discussed this at the pre-bid meeting and at the pre-construction meeting. And it was pretty clear that there's only so much that you could expect a contractor to be responsible for the weather. So, but I don't see this a big, it's not a big number. So they may say, fine, you know, if that's the issue, if it's gonna cost us $500 to put the tap in, and it's going to cost another five hundred dollars in electric for a week. You know, we're not talking about big numbers one way or another. Um, so I didn't think it was. That's why I didn't originally put this out to you when I got it. We were going to just work on it and let everybody know what's going on, and get the job done. Makes sense. I have to agree with you, Mr. Schwab, that uh, putting the tap in uh, long term is probably more beneficial than bringing trucks in to irrigate. Uh, again, down the road uh, next year or the year after that, we may need addition, need to put water in that area again. If we have the tap, it's easier done then. Sure. Yeah, it's already set up. And if we have the new well, then we have plenty of uh, supply. Right, so we have options. I think it's a smaller issue than perhaps it appears from reading all this. Right. My opinion. Yeah. Can I can I can I say something, John? Yeah, John. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, John. Um, we all have to remember one thing here: those fields out there are nothing but sand. Okay. The the material that they put in is just an additive, just like the additive that we keep putting in the field of dreams and whatnot. The, the amount of water that you're going to need to do this is going to be extremely high, okay, because it's just going to go right on through. So you have to remember that. Uh, I don't know what kind of field we were expecting without irrigation on it, but it, it, it's, it's going to be very difficult to grow grass uh, and, and, and water that sufficiently so it gets, you know, the amount that it needs to grow. I just, and, and, and another thing that I, I don't understand, we put all this weed killer down. Okay, where do weed killer go? Okay, now we're going to put grass seed on, which they did. I was out talking to the contractor today. Okay. How, how's, I don't understand, you know, I don't, I'm not an expert in that, but how can you put weed killer down and then a couple of weeks later you're putting grass seed seed is what you're putting down the, the, the weed killer is supposed to kill seed now we're going to put all this you know water on what is it going to do i i, I don't know As scott probably knows more than i know but i mean um we got to remember this is all sand out there so it's going to take a tremendous amount of water and it's going to put an additional strain on the pump that we have out there already. That's all I got. Well, I had asked, you know, when this project was, was, was getting put together that, uh, you know, one thing that we really wanted to watch was avoid the need to have uh, something else that's had an irrigation requirement and that this uh, event uh, lawn area had a, uh, some kind of robust uh, uh, grass that didn't require a lot of, of uh, you know, coddling and uh, it was pretty drought tolerant. I mean, it's gonna be probably driven on and stomped on and everything else. Um, and- uh, Did we put that down? We put that down, right? <laughs> Where I, did that go? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. I thought the purpose of this field was not to look like the soccer fields because it wasn't to be used as a soccer field so that we weren't going to put as much into it 
as we had the soccer field and the softball field. But I didn't know we were putting weed killer down. The, I mean, they put they put four acres. I think it was four four or five acres of weed killer. I went out there to take a look at it one day, and I'm God. like, oh, somebody must have put weed killer down here. And then I find out, yeah, they did, because there was weeds that was growing in there. And I'm wow. like, I, 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 I didn't just, think they were going to do that. I didn't think that we were going to erase what was there and then put seed on top. I thought we were just going to keep what was there. And just to add to it. Um, well, no, we, we did that actually last fall. We erased what was there so that in the spring we could put the seed on and everything was going great until the weeds took over. And so Steve Lennon recommended I had to kill the new set, the new weeds, whatever that, John, I don't know what kind of weeds those are called. And, you know, start over with the grass. That was Gerald's responsibility. But, you know, apparently uh, the the grass that was grown was taken over by new weeds during the summer. The last mm -hmm. fall, well, and killed it off. And oh, and just remember, okay, we have the county's property right next to us, which we cut there down all the way to the trail for years. Okay, okay. look at the weeds that are growing in the field. Where do you think they're going to end up? In our field. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, it, it depends how much money we want to spend here. We, we try to make it uh, green or whatever. I mean, it, it's uh, how much money is it going to take to look like that? Or, or are we just going to get it up and nice and look and, and then, you know, maintain it. And then in the future, when other things come up that we, we need to do, uh, it's a good feel. But I mean, it, just, just remember, I, I, I don't know what everybody's thinking this field's going to look like, but I mean, uh, you got to remember that field right next to where the, you know the, the or where our field stops and then it goes to the county trail. There is that that grass there is probably maybe a foot high or maybe even a little bit higher. All those weed seeds are going to be coming across to our field, so. You know, it's 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 a never-ending battle trying yeah. to take these weeds. Uh, back to the question at hand: uh, Everyone's okay with the uh, contractor, irrigation contractor, putting a, a tap in, and and we'll try to work out something with the county to get a sprinkler. Correct. Okay. I thought we were going to tap into our own well. Well, we're going to try. We're going to see what works. You know, that's the goal. The goal, if we can get that thing going, but maybe it's cheaper to, you know, they're working on both options. Okay. So whatever option, if it doesn't cost anything to get the water cannons from the county, then maybe that will work better than the tap. They'll try both things. These are things that they're, they're just working on today. And if you didn't have a meeting today, we would have let you know when they had it resolved. So we'll let you know later okay. what they recommend is the best deal. But you know, we have to depend on uh, Steve Lennon and, and that firm to give us their advice. Okay. Uh, does that close out that discussion? Anything else, uh, Mr. Schwab or Mr. Fox, on that? Not for me, nothing. All right. No. Nope. All right. Uh, Mr. Schwab, you're back up. Township Administrator. Okay. Uh, um, number of things. One is uh, we're having a meeting tomorrow morning at the mansion with uh, the owners and, and, and with uh, Harry and with John concerning their flooding in their basement that they're looking for our advice to help them out. So we've set that up for tomorrow morning. Uh, Field of Dreams Water. Um, so I sent out my notice for budget requests. Budgets are due by November 17th. So we can start putting things together for you. Um, we received the best practices, my favorite thing, the best practices uh, state report. It's due November 3rd. Uh, we don't meet again until November 8th for when, when I'll be there to do it. So we'll schedule November 8th to brief you on it. The best practices document is put together by the finance officer and myself, along with uh, uh, the clerk. 
we'll certify that we'll schedule it for the eighth. I looked at it briefly. You have to get 15 uh, out of, I forget, 15 points out of um, 23. And I think we're between 18 and 20 without even thinking about it. So I'm not worried about not being able to uh, uh, satisfy their needs, but it has a couple interesting items on there. So uh, we'll be putting that together and getting that out. Last thing I want to mention is the audit report you have in the uh, uh, in your consent agenda to uh, accept the audit report. Again, no findings from the prior year audit, several years in a row. So we've had that, so we should be uh, proud of that. One of the things interesting in both the best practices and the auditor mentioning is when we have capital projects that have unneeded balances and we don't see that that's gonna happen soon, you're supposed to cancel them out. One of the things that uh, Rob and I have always recommended is that we wait, cancel them out until we've used up enough so we don't have to take that cancellation and go through the gymnastics of paying back borrowing. But we have two of them, one which was a cash thing from two, three years ago with the road program. And we had our old municipal building one from 2004 that I'm gonna to put together a resolution to cancel those. And the main purpose of getting it canceled is so that we have cash in our capital improvement fund. Whenever you wanna make a, do a project, particular project where it's not something we planned at the beginning of the year, such as we wanna uh, do a bond ordinance to get started on the seawall design for the waterfront park, if that ends up working out. And we wanna get that started now, rather than wait until you adopt the 2022 budget you need 5% down payment money. By canceling, we have money that's in the capital improvement fund that you can then reallocate for that purpose. So I'll do an explanation, but I will put on for your next agenda or for your November 8th agenda, a resolution to cancel those two ordinances. And uh, we should then be able to meet both the best practices rules and the recommendation of our auditor. So I wanted to mention that. The other thing I wanna mention is in the terms of the audit report, we published a, a summary that's required, a synopsis that's published. And one of the lines in there deals with deferred liability for local school district taxes. We received a call asking what that was all about. And we tried to explain uh, that it deals with funds, the difference between we collect them in January and we pay it in July. It's been like this for hundred years. And the, but a number of years ago, we were ordered to use a portion of that as a revenue. And then in the last 10 years, at least twice, maybe three times, we used a portion of it to solidify our uh, budget. It has nothing to do with the school district, doesn't change any money that goes to the school district. But because of the title, some people believe that might have something to do with the school district. We try to explain that it has nothing to do with the school district. And one of the questions is why is the number not changed? If it's if their total taxes go up, shouldn't that change? The number that's on there is the number that the township committee over the last 50 years has allocated in their budget, not the amount that's available for allocation, but the actual allocation. So in any year where you use some of it, it'll change from year to year. But in 2020, you didn't use any deferred school taxes in your budget. So therefore the number between 2019 and 2020 remains the same. So in case you get any further questions on that, I'm bringing that up. We've talked about it many times during budget, but if anyone has any further questions, you can talk to Bob or I about it. Um, so best practices, audit, budget, Field of Dreams mansion, I'm done. Thank you. Um, I want to close the loop on something in regard back to the uh, uh, Mr. Fox's uh, conversation with DEP on the mitigation. Do we need to authorize uh, uh, any work that he may need to do to start scouting out an area where that- uh, I think we're preliminary. When he gets the more formal information, then he's gonna have to give us a proposal as okay. to whether or not it's a big item little item, okay. whether or not you need to authorize them to do things. So you don't need to move forward. But again, if you are thinking that you want to move forward on having, let's say we get everything approved uh, verbally, 
and now he's got to put together the permit and do the plans and specs for work that might be done in 2022. You may need that to authorize financing for that because my guess is it'll be more than $500 in engineering work. Yeah, and, and Harry, would you work with John Fenimore on that as well? Consult with him as to what area you determine would be the best or is, would that be up for discussion once you present something? Okay. No, of course, I would, John would be the first person I would go to, yes. Okay, good. All right, uh, department heads, uh, administration, Mrs. Warp. Just want to remind everyone that um, the shredding event and the uh, community cleanup day will be, uh, I believe that's October 16th. Yes, yeah, Saturday, October 16th. The shredding event is 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the municipal building front parking lot and community cleanup is 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the um, public works department. Let's see, I have, um, I'd like to add for the uh, a consent agenda, I received a piece of correspondence uh, later this evening that I saw here at home on my, um, checking my work email request for use of Gateway Park for uh, Saturday, October 30th for the uh, Women's Club 5K run. So if that's okay with the Township Committee members, I'd like to add that to your consent agenda for approval this evening. Um, let's see what else. And the rest that I have is all correspondence. Thank you. Okay. What date was the Gateway Park request? Uh, Saturday, October 30th. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Public Works, Mr. Fenimore, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Um, we cut all the, the township properties probably for the last time. Uh, we've been getting the uh, equipment ready for uh, Leaf pickup, we no sooner get the compost site clear. Um, that did a, um, we, we rented a screening machine this year and that did a fantastic job. Um, we got, we pulled four 20 yard dumpsters of debris out of it. Um, and the compost is really nice. Uh, we delivered most of it to the farm and um, we're going to have the cleanup the 16th, uh, like Jana said. Um, this year, we can't take that. We've had a lot of people bring in tires that are full of mud. The landfill will no longer take them. The only way they'll take the tires if they're cleaned. So anybody that you know you're talking to or whatever. Um, if they're pulling the tires out of the river, which is a good thing, they have to be clean before I'll take them. Uh, last year, we did about 30 some tires. And let me tell you, it was a mess. So uh, we're trying to, you know, to let people know ahead of time and you can bring TVs and electronic stuff out. Well, I have two yards, two 30 yard dumpsters uh, for regular trash. We'll have uh, 12 20 yarder for pressure treated like we usually do and uh, any metal that you want to bring out you can bring out too um that's it that's all i have thank you john uh, do you want to add anything on uh uh brush pickup was uh last week but uh, as far as uh, uh some properties seem to do whole backyard or whole property cleanouts and, and uh, cutting trees and brush and it's stacked up four or five feet high and and tree stumps uh, and else. Uh, yeah we're going we're going to have to pass the an ordinance and 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 really uh, uh, clear it up uh, uh, people think that they can just uh, we're, we're not we're not into do yard clearing where we're you know it's brushes for you know if you taken like um, small trees 
down or, or, or brush from, you know, your trees, you're trimming and putting out. We don't do, we can't get into land clearing and um, it makes it very difficult and it's, and it's cost um, to pick this up. So we're going to have to make sure that we look into an ordinance that will make sure that it covers this. So that we don't have this in the, in the future where we have problems with people not understanding. We also have, um, you know, you can bring brush out to the garage. Uh, we have a 30 yard dumpster and, you know, they're, they're able to bring some out. That's another problem that we have to do. We have to kind of put some kind of a, a limit on it. We can't let somebody do 30 yards of clearing up and bring it all out to the garage. So um, we'll have to really look on, the, you know, making a new ordinance and, and getting this cleared up. So then that way, um, um, you know, when, when people do this kind of work, they, they, first of all, they should contact the township and, and ask what they can put out, not just put it out and then expect us to get it up because uh, we would, we would never get done. That's all. All right. Thank you. I just want, I know it's come up a couple of times, uh, through the summer and so forth. And I wanted to give you the opportunity to air that out. So thank you. I appreciate that. I forgot all about that. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mayor, I don't know if you would like us to our office to begin to look into what some of the other, other towns in the area are doing as far as that. I know John mentioned uh, putting together an ordinance. I don't know if we're at that stage yet or, uh, or not, but if you would like our office to begin that review, we're, we're happy to do that. Just let us know. I think between Mr. Fenimore and Mrs. Lohr and Mr. Schwab uh, and whatever input the committee members, we can probably get gel something as far as putting brackets on how to describe this. And then uh, we'll probably pass it off to Mr. Heinhold and uh, he can, uh, you know, peek over the fence and see what other towns are doing that's effective. But uh, I think in-house to start, you know, and that'll save us both time. So good enough. Thank you. Uh, Chief DeSanto. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to close some things out that we talked about last week, last meeting. Um, maps were uh, distributed to the emergency squads other than Delanco that's servicing, servicing us uh, in regards to the crossings to try to uh, get them more information and help them out. Uh, it's not even updated in Google Maps, so we had to rely on uh, the administration's hand drawings for the yard sale map. So um, technology is, is lagging in this area, but uh, we forwarded those uh, maps to the surrounding uh, emergency squads to try to relieve that issue of them not uh, locating a specific street in the crossings. Uh, Fern last, uh, we, last meeting asked me about the crosswalk. I need to follow up. Um, I was shocked that none of the crosswalks were done yet. So I, I kind of made the assumption that they were going to replace everything that they um, milled out and after they paved and all the striping's done, but there's no crosswalks. So I'll be reaching out to the county to find out, follow up if, if they're intending to um, do that themselves. And I asked them why they're at it to hit all the um, uh, crosswalks on Brownton Avenue that we spoke about before are worn down and need to be uh, refreshed. So I'll uh, follow up on that and find out why the contractor didn't do the crosswalks on Coopertown Road. Uh, October 30th, the 5K run. Ms. Laura, if you could, if you could form me the information, we typically put out new parking signs that day um, for the beginning, the start of the race and around the bend on Orchard, uh, just because uh, they usually start off as a pretty big, big bunch of group. So if you could just give me the information of when registration is that morning and so forth. And uh, we'll, we'll take care of that for um, Saturday morning, uh, making proper notice before Saturday morning about having cars removed off of Rancocas and Orchard. Chief, uh, I'm actually going to defer to uh, Kate for that information. Okay. That information to you. Uh, she has all that from for the winners. Right. Kate, could yeah. you forward that to me? I, I will I'll send that to you, Chief. I thought someone from the Women's Club already did that, but I, I'll do it. I'll send yeah, it to you well, tomorrow. They tonight. may be intending to, it's still yeah. got some time away, but just, uh, you know, if they are, just make sure they CC me so I can yeah. get the uh, no parking signs up. I'll, I'll send it to you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, 
The other item I want to talk about is uh, me, myself, and the mayor met with the, uh, the I guess, the ownership of Cornerstone in reference to uh, handicap enforcement. And I think they actually just said Title 39 in general. And I asked them to, to um, check their site plan uh, because generally in the past ordinances, specifically, I was uh, looking at the Living Springs ordinance. Uh, we referred to the site plan as the um, handicap spots to be enforced. So I asked them to uh, confirm that their site plan matches what's physically out there. They advised me today that they have. And um, I did follow up on that today for one specific reason, because uh, apparently there's an issue with the Field of Dreams uh, handicap parking. So why, um, when I got that, I said, well, let me double check and make sure that that's listed in the semi-public uh, areas and it, and it was not. Um, so we, I guess that's something we didn't, or I, I didn't think of to include or whenever it was, whenever it was parking lot was made. Uh, so I'm gonna be with working Mr. Heinhold's office. And there is a couple other locations which I think should be added. Uh, there's two different ordinances, which I'm kind of confused. I'll need his help uh, where the best to, uh, added on to because there's one section where um, there's a list of semi-public areas and then there's another section where it's not all the areas are listed but some different areas are listed so we need to get some uh, congruency some some uh, make sure that the, you know find out which which uh, ordinance we best to add the cornerstone and i believe the crossings may have i gotta check that tomorrow I was thinking about it this evening. I think they have one handicapped spot by their, I guess, park area. So I have to check that. So I want to include that. And, and I have a couple others that uh, I went around and checked and made sure that uh, we can get this done in all one shot. So I'll be working with that, Mr. Heinhold. And um, I don't know if you've seen the, the Facebook post on our page, but we did have um, you know, came in as one early this morning, but then there were several other vehicle burglaries where uh, subjects or sub subject entered vehicles which were unlocked and removed. Uh, and sometimes they just remove change. Sometimes they don't find anything and move on. But uh, the one that the shows the importance of locking vehicles, whether they're in the street, your driveway, was uh, someone had a garage door open in an unlocked car. So they pushed the garage door and it opened. And so they had gained entry into the garage. Now that's as far as they went. They just, the intent was to look into another car that was in a garage, but that makes them one step or closer to the house. So mm -hmm. we put on there reminding people who made notification that this occurred and, um, and please remind people to lock their cars, even if they're just going in the house for a few minutes, lock the cars behind them. I don't care what time of day it is. Uh, if you're in a parking lot in a store, parking lot at the Field of Dreams, parking lot at Pennington Park. Um, you know, even if you're at the dog park and you can see your car, lock, lock the car doors. It's, it's a big deterrence. It's not 100% guarantee that they're not going to bust your window and, and get in your vehicle, but it's very rare that that does occur. It does occur, but very rarely does it occur where they actually break the window to get into the vehicle because it uh, makes more noise and, and draws more attention to them. So if you would, and also keep valuables out of sight uh, when you do lock your car. So there is a reduced the chance that they would break the window because there's nothing of value that they can see and it's worth it. So if you could just share those two points and we'll continue to put that information out and, and uh, try to do extra patrols. But I, I, I hear across the riverfront, this is a ongoing issue in Dalaran, Edgewater Park, they've all experienced it within the last two weeks, similar uh, burglary thefts. So we'll, we'll do our best to try to uh, prevent them and uh, ask the public's help to help us uh, do that. So that's all I got for this evening, uh, up until we get to discussion and I have some uh, reminders about curfew and Halloween and so forth. Very good, thank you, Chief. You're welcome. All right. Uh, Let's see, I think I got everybody there. Consent agenda items. Consent agenda are considered uh, to be routine, will be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. 
All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Uh, let's see. All right, resolution uh, 2021-122, resolution certifying receipt of audit, uh, payment of bills, account, current fund, $868,165.79, payroll, $162,920.29, capital, $168,448.36, escrow trust, $6,646.48, housing trust, $1,566.83, municipal open space, $12,866.20. Approval of minutes, uh, September 27th, 2021, and approval of Gateway Park, uh, use of the Gateway Park for the Women's Club for the 5K run Saturday, October 30th, if I have that correct. Approval of the consent agenda, a motion please. So moved. moved. I think that was Mr. Brown got that one. Uh, second. Second. Second by Ms. Fitzpatrick, roll call please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Lutz. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, proposed ordinance amending Township Code at Chapter 216 Governing Park Regulations to clarify provisions of passive public areas. Uh, we had deferred this from the last meeting uh, in case anyone had any questions or uh, of, of Mr. Heinhold, but we have Mr. Raymond tonight and the solicitor. Uh, are there any questions or comments or are we prepared to either make this uh, first reading tonight or put it on the agenda for, for next meeting. I thought we were thinking of removing that paragraph um, that Chris had um, brought up about the raw meat to grill areas. I thought we were just gonna remove that because it was uh, just, some old language that's been carried forward. Uh, I, and I thought that would have, I thought her comments that we would just remove it. I'm trying to uh, trying to find it. I read, when I read it again, it's, it's still in there. Yeah, it's paragraph W, uh, item seven. Okay, yeah. in my rereading that, uh, it still seems to apply to today's uh, time. You know, it talks about grilling and, uh, making sure the meat is prepared or uh, before doing that. And if we have folks that are fishing along the, uh, the river, uh, do we want them cleaning, at, cleaning their fish right there on the property, on the public property and leaving the fish guts, et cetera, there to do their grilling or... Um, this doesn't say that. This says that no raw meat, fish, or poultry shall be brought to any township public property and cooked on any cooking apparatus unless such meat, fish, or poultry is grill ready. So this has to do with grilling, not fishing. Maybe that should say no, cooking, no cooking, grilling. That's saying you just, you're saying in that section, you're saying you can have cooking and grilling as long as it's grill ready. Yeah, that's right. So we shouldn't have any grilling. We don't have any grills anywhere publicly. And I don't know that we would, it would be, could be a fire hazard. And, um, and then if you wanted to add something about the fish, people fishing, you know, are not permitted to clean their catch on any public property you may want to add that but i would take that paragraph and change it that there are you know no grilling on public township public property right so we don't want anyone bringing their hibachi to um... exactly so i would say no grilling on uh, township public property Forget about whether the meat's prepared or not, as Christine brought up. I somehow I missed that the first time I read it, but I was glad she brought it up. So I just say no grilling on township property, on township public property. Well, the previous page, uh, subparagraph P says no fires are permitted on public property. Does that cover all that? Does that include? a grill, a bocce, campfire? 
it, it may make sense to also make it explicitly prohibit grilling. Um, I mean, I think probably technically, yeah, you're, if you're prohibiting any fire, that would also pro prohibit a propane fire. But, um, you know, there, there might be some some benefit if, if the goal is that you're not going to have any any grilling on public property. Why not make make that explicit? Because people could in their in their minds think of a fire as you know, like a, a fire pit type event where, and, and in, in their minds think of that separately as grilling. So if, if the intent is to prohibit grilling, um, I think maybe it does make sense to amend that paragraph seven to just explicitly say no, no grilling. That would be my thought, but um, I can submit it to Mr. Heinel too and get his, his opinion as well. And did you want to add a section where um, people uh, cannot clean their fish? which I know that's a big, that has been a big problem. Um, we, I don't we, know about and that. I just throw the guts and, and John can attend. Certainly, I mean, if that's an issue, we can certainly. They just throw the guts and the waste into that. the um, trash bins or leave it around and it smells bad. How will people know about this? How will these fishermen know? Maybe, you know. <laughs> We're adding, to add that, I mean, someone has to let them know. Maybe we could post something. I say leave it alone. It, no, has anybody ever contested this in a hundred years? No, not that I know of. And I'm, I mean, a fisherman, if you've got a fish, that becomes somebody else's food, okay? Yeah. You know, the bird. Uh, nature takes care of that. It, you're just you're making a mine out of a molehill here, right? You know, no grilling on public land should should cover it. Yeah, I'll agree. I agree. Unless unless it's certain marinades that I own stock in, then you want to prepare your meat with those marinades. <laughs> Are you being funny, John? Sorry, guys. <laughs> hey, fire me. <laughs> this seems like we're, we're talking about something that hasn't come up ever. I don't right. Know. The fish. Sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Under W, uh, line seven, or uh, subparagraph seven will just be uh, no grilling, some language like that. Is that is that what everyone's happy with? Yeah, oh, yeah. no grilling on township public property. All right. Sweet, short and sweet. All right. So is that to go back to uh, you probably put in no cooking because you have that in there, no yeah. grilling or cooking. In case somebody cooks in a different way, not on a grill. So no grilling or cooking, probably. No grilling or cooking. Okay. Now is there going to be a Boy Scout exemption? Well, I think they give permission. Um, when they have the when they use the firehouse when they camp there and when they cook, they get permission from the fire department. When they use Gateway Park for their flag ceremony, they get permission. So that to me is an exception and they get permission because someone did text me about that while we were discussing it. Yeah. I just wanted to, you know. I mean, so they, they, they do get permission. I, I don't see that as a problem. Okay. Well, I have an idea. Like uh, mm -hmm. EAB with their cleanups, different cleanups will, you know grill hot dogs for the workers and so that is a good point like, yeah we, we have, grill the yeah. recreation we don't we cook hot dogs when we had the cleanup out there because i cooked them the last time for a few hours out there what's down um, the parking lot what's that's the that's a parking lot yeah yeah so that's not well, really i have a uh, an idea for a boy scout or eagle scout because kate was saying how how someone know all this rules and regulations in reference to these parks and no one wants a sign that's you know you know 60 by by 24. So right. maybe an Eagle Scout or Boy Scout can work on a QR code where you just put the QR code on the sign and then they could just scan it and they'll take you right to our, our 360 code and list all the regulations. That's a that's an idea. 
was talking with uh, Ms. Pervenzano about a month or so ago. She mentioned that, and I said, "Well, hold off. Wait till we we get sorted through this thing." Yeah, yeah. Once once we're it's settled, but it just might be. Oh, it's a great idea because this this is several pages deep. But I didn't know if you know a QR code, but maybe have the top five. You know, no swimming, no fires, no you know. Great, but I think maybe we should just to cover um the questions that were raised about the boy scouts that no cooking or grilling unless permission is granted maybe we should add that so that because they do get permission and recreation has been cooking hot dogs on a cleanup day out at west avenue for a long time we don't grill we boil them in a big pot so maybe we should note that i i don't know Janice. You want to pass that on, Steve, to see what uh, what wordsmithing you and uh, Doug can come up with? I will I will pass that comment along to Doug. The only concern, just as I sit here, is, is then do you get into a situation where just your average Joe thinks he can apply to the township for some sort of permit to have a have a cookout on public property and, and you know, um, then you get into issues of, of you granting it for one person, not granting it for granting it for one organization and not granting it for another. Uh, but I'll, I'll talk to Mr. Heinold and, and maybe we can come up with some language that sort of addresses your concern, Ms. Fitzpatrick, but also um, doesn't get the township in any um, hot water about again approving for certain reasons and not approving for others. Okay. Good point. All right. All right, so we're all good with that. Uh, we'll wait and see what uh, and anyone running through this uh, has sees any other little glitches or something that seems obsolete. Uh, uh, pass that on through Mrs. Lord to uh, Mr. Heinold. All right. Uh, and everybody's okay with item eight, right? The smoking and the vaping and the, all the CDBG cannabis stuff, right? Everybody's okay with that? Yeah, that's where we started on this. Yeah, just want to make sure I wasn't here. So I wouldn't, because it talks about uh, snuff and chewing gummies, not just smoking. So yeah, I think we okay we pretty much got it all covered that. in that category. So you're gonna wait till the next meeting to introduce us. It looks like okay. Is everyone in agreement on that? Agreed. Yes. Okay. Agreed. Uh, appointments for cannabis subcommittee. Uh, I'll turn it, let's see the two chairs, uh, Mrs. Patrick and Ms. Holland. Uh, yes, and Chris and I went back and forth on this. So of course we know Chris and I are from the Township Committee, Tom Lord and Bill Madelevitz, the Joint Land Use Board. And the members at large, we did choose five to come up to the nine, which was Matt Bartlett, Joe Galvano, Joe Chashka, Heather Sparrow, and Steve McLaughlin. They cover, each one of them covers different areas and we thought they would be beneficial and make some good contributions to the committee. And we're all working off the uh, the, the same master list, correct? Uh, John yes. Day, Marilyn Entenman, uh, Bill Madelovich, you mentioned Steve McLaughlin, Matt Bartlett, uh, Liz Mattisette, uh, Heather Sparrow, Joe Galvano, Joe Chaska, and Christine DeSanti. Correct. Yes. Right. Yes. And uh, Lisa Lord. Yes. All right. So we have our nine members. All right. And uh, any questions from the committee on on those selections, or just uh, how we do this, uh, Mrs. Lord? Do we? Well, the resolution that you adopted just says that the membership shall be appointed by the um, township committee. It doesn't say that it needs to be by resolution, but either, either one, motion is fine or a resolution, whatever you want. I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat those names? I had to step away. Okay. Um, well, you know the four, right? Well, it's uh, yourself, Me, it's Christine, Christine, um, Bill, Bill, Madam Levitt, and Tom Lord, right. Matt Bartlett. Joe Galvano, Joe Chashka, Heather Sparrow, and Steve McLaughlin. So these are the recommendations that we make to the Township Committee to approve. Christine, you agree with that? Yep. 
Any questions? John, Fern? No. Look forward to the committee, uh, subcommittee getting together and uh, doing their research and uh, putting together a report back to us. Uh, and I guess what will probably take about four or five months to uh, get all the information uh, to present to the committee or to the township committee. So, yeah, I'll move to approve the co chair's uh, list of names to be on the cannabis subcommittee. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think a roll call vote would be appropriate. Okay. Since it's appointing membership. Okay. Roll call then, please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Olet? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes. Well done. All right, meeting open to the public for comments and questions. This is session two. Uh, as usual, state your name and address. And uh, meetings. Yes, yeah, could you call, please? enable chat? Yeah, Aaron. Right I'm here. I'm here. Okay. All right, everybody, hang on just a moment. I can just try and read it. What what is that? I didn't understand what you're saying, Bill. Now Aaron's try the oh, nope. That's a breakout room, Aaron. Oh, I'm sorry. What <laughs> we need we need the chat disabled. No, oh, it is a, it is disabled. Do you want it enabled? Enable. It is enabled. It is enabled right now. Yeah. Right, thank you. And then we don't need the breakout room right now. I'm sorry. You guys can just I'll cancel that. My my apologies. There's nothing to do, chair. We do have something in the chat. Mayor, would you like me to read that? Mayor is muted. You can click the chat thing and the text will come up on a, on a yeah. menu. I can see it. Yep. So there, there is a, for the record, there is a, um, a post in the chat from Bill Matalevich regarding the grant that the township has received to, uh, for, to plant trees. Bill has made suggestions as to where he believes the trees could go. And um, I, I talked to him personally about that and thought about um, reaching out to Scott Taylor regarding the field of dreams because Scott didn't want to make any um, plannings out there until we were just about done. And he would propose some type of area for plannings. And also, I thought I would reach out to Joe Mersinger to see if some could be planted at the Pearson School. Some, someone recommended that area because it's so open and a lot of the different schools in the areas, Morristown, for instance, has a lot, a lot of trees in their open space that really does look nice and uh, there's no shaded area there. So they were two areas that I was thinking of and I had spoke to Bill and someone else about those two areas that I was gonna look into. Well, he's asking for a, uh, um, a working group uh, it would seem uh, one or two from REC and EAB and certainly get John Fenimore involved in that. And uh, uh, as far as targeting some areas, uh, I talked with Bill yesterday about this and it seemed uh, it was a substantial number of trees, correct Bill? I believe it's 80.
Did we, did we still have to be closer to 250 trees? Oh, I don't know why I thought 80. Why did I yeah. think 80? I don't know. I, uh, we got about $40,000 to spend on trees. Hmm. Okay. Now you have mentioned the, the bill, the, the, the grant for this, and it required, uh, I was kind of confused as you talked about it, that, that the township would have to front the money for it and then get reimbursed after all the trees were planted. Is that correct? Yes. And what's the amount of money that's for this particular grant? I think the total was 80 grand of which 20% had to be in kind. That's where I got 80 from. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, originally I had planned to use a lot of them to uh, repopulate the light rail station with trees. But apparently that's because that's a state agency that's subject to the no net loss provisions. So that comes under a separate act. So DEP in our meeting said that we could not use any of the grant funds to plant on state property by transit. However, they would permit us to move the trees that were supposed to go on the light rail station to other parts of town. That's why I'm asking for a working group to put some of the rec. As Kate noted when they met last week or the last meeting, it's very hot and buggy out there. Yeah. So it really needs some shade. Similarly, we can put some along the, uh, the Greenway Trail. So I have to get county permission for that. And I have, I'd like to put some along the school grounds. School grounds too, yeah, that would be nice, would add. So I guess the first thing I need is permission from the township committee to reallocate the locations trees from the light rail station to have to get permission from DEP for that. So this was for a, 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 a grant that's already been submitted. I thought this was some, something coming up. No, we got the grant. We got the grant. Yeah. We had a kickoff meeting the same day you guys were at Zerberg Mansion with DEP. Right. So I kind of had to wing it there by myself. But uh, they said you couldn't plant them at the light rail station, but they would allow the trees to be planted elsewhere in town. Uh -huh. So we have to submit a planting plan shortly. I forget the exact timing of that. So this subcommittee would have to move pr pretty quickly. So don't you think that Taylor Design should be involved in that bill? Or Yeah, I spoke to Scott the other day, actually. He's on board with it. But because everybody got their back up last time. I figured I'd get everybody involved early on. Well, I think, Phil, I think that the uh, chairman of REC should be involved. Okay. Um, I think someone from the school should be involved. If we're gonna ask, you know, we're trying to get um, trees planted there. Read. EAB, shade tree. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can't, yeah, I, I can't commit to anything, but I'm suggesting that those yeah. people be involved to see if they even want, you know, maybe the school doesn't even want trees because of the maintenance of them, but it would be how nice. Much, how, much, how much do we have to put up the governing body to match this grant? 20%. Well, we'd use it about 150,000? 100 grand. 100 grand, so it's $20,000. So, yeah, okay. 80 20 is the match. And that could be in kind services? Correct. Okay. So, 20,000 of in kind services. Right. So, it's basically 80 grand worth of free trees. Now, is that already accounted in our budget? I've kind of lost track of this. Richard? No. No. Not for this year. So that's 20K. We've got a. Well, the planting would take place in the spring of next year, which is when the outlay would occur. So basically, we have to commit on, on that, that spending now for next year's budget, correct? I would think so. 
uh, unless DEP will require, because I don't know their time frame, that we show that our portion is done by Chapter 159 budget amendment. That's the other possibility that we usually, if we get a grant, we then insert it in the budget at the time we get the grant. This was preliminary because they hadn't met. There were conditions, so Bill's working on that end. So DEP would have to tell us what their time frame is, whether we could put it in the 2022 budget or whether we have to amend the 2021 budget, show both the grant money as well as the local share. I'm not sure. Well, I have to correspond with them regarding permissions so I can include you, right. Richard, in the budget and timing. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out because we have, we have to show the full 100,000 as an expenditure and then we show the 80,000 as the grant. Right. Because we have to spend the full amount. Right. And get reimbursed later on. So, but you know, that's it's a cash issue, but it's, it's not a budget issue in terms of the full amount. Okay. The budget issue is only the net amount. Right. I think John Fenimore should be on that too as well. Okay. Eighty thousand dollars worth of trees is quite a few trees. Yeah, um, I think I figured two hundred and fifty or so. Seems like a big task ever uh, because we've had trouble uh, planting street trees. We've had trouble. Well, trees we're going to subcontract the planting this time, John. We're not going to plant them ourselves. Uh, no, I'm not saying the physical labor part. I'm saying the locations. Um, what if we did? What if we didn't find 250 holes, Bill? Well, then we don't take the full amount. Okay. All right. Yeah, and the one. I, I was riding around town a bit today and I noticed that some of those trees that we were planted on lilac and some other areas, they aren't being watered. No one's filling those, um, whatever they call them, jackets or what have you. Some of them look like they're dying. Gator bags. Did, yeah, did a, we, we, weren't letter go to, we weren't pardon? getting the rain. We were getting a lot of rain. They took root. There's, yeah. uh, I know one you know but the bags uh thank god i thought we had a very rainy season that's why i was a little surprised to hear about the field of dream event on i'm a little worried about what john says that it's just a pile of sand out there um you know I, i'll just tell you well that's another subject for another time but uh, you know lilac i do believe those trees are taking root now um you said, uh, Bill, you're expecting, you thought it might come out to about 250 trees, and that's a $100,000 total cost, right? That's like 400 bucks a tree. Does that sound oh, like yeah. That's about right installed. Yeah, that's about right. All right. Yeah, planted. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And they're mature. They're somewhat mature anyway. They're not. Yeah, they're the same know. size as the ones we planted on Lilac. Yeah, <laughs> they're decent. Yeah, decent D &D. size. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, are we all in agreement, uh, Mr. Madelovich can proceed and keep everyone online the information, Mr. Schwab and uh, uh, the- Yeah, I think he's asking for a, uh, a planning committee or a subcommittee. Right yeah. Now. And I think he needs people from the different areas where he's proposing to plant them. Just keep those cannabis committee people away or else you know what they're going to want to grow. <laughs> <laughs> clever. <laughs> Too clever. Well, the, the respective liaisons want to uh, tap uh, rec and shade tree and uh, EAB. Uh, uh, for, Public works and school. For yep. uh, volunteers for this? Yes, I will. I'll do my share. All right. And... Uh, Forward all Who's that. Who's the school uh, board? Who's the school board liaison? Is that still Fern? Yes. I can so read you'll, you'll check with them to see if somebody there would want to be involved in this? Yes, I will. Right. Good. So uh, we'll get the names for them to Bill and copy, uh, copy Janice on that. Uh, anyone else want to be in on that? Well, Bill, Bill is Shade Tree. I'm Shade Tree Liaison. Dr. John Paye is here tonight. So I think we would make a part of our regular 
agenda is to uh, you know find homes for these trees, right, Bill? Yeah, but it might have to happen a little quicker than that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Susan Matera suggested replacing some of the trees that we've lost recently. Um, well, yeah, the, the contractors are, are, yeah. contractors can do that gratis. And John Fenimore would know those locations. So, Bill, you'll um, you'll be the wrangler for this uh, uh, this search committee to, to yes. find locations. All right. And so you'll we'll pass the names to you, and uh, you'll go from there. Correct. Yep. There is a public outlaws utility conflicts. We might be limited as to species within those parameters. But yeah, I'm going to involve a couple of our tree expert for a commission, as well as some outside help to collect the trees. All right. Thank you, Bill. Good. Thank you, Bill. All right. Well done. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? Uh, we're still open to the public. Yeah, Liz, Madison, Liz Madison has had her hand raised the whole meeting. I don't know if she has something she wants to say. I don't know where you see that. In the um, corner. It's In not on, that That was a mistake. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> it doesn't show on my computer. Sumatera um, told me that my hand was raised and I, I don't know how it got there. Oh, okay. Um, well, you can remove it. I don't know how. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> right, when she told me that, I looked and Perfect. I don't. I took care of it. It's gone. It's gone now. It, it oh. was raised during a non-public uh, uh, speaking, so that's I wasn't sure. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I think I probably just yeah. hit something. Matt um, Bartlett has his hand raised, though. Any other public <laughs> comments? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, Matt Bartlett, 1800 Second Street. Good evening. Uh, just a couple things. First, on behalf of Daiso, we are in the middle of our fall soccer season. Uh, we go through the middle of November. We got 14 teams plus uh, about four dozen minis playing out at Field of Dreams. You'll see the fields in use every single day of the week, and we sometimes stack up to 10 games on Saturdays at Field of Dreams. So if anyone's around, feel free to stop on by and cheer on our kids. Um, a couple items on the the no grilling on town property. I'm not sure if it would be applicable or not, but uh, DISA does uh, cook the hot dogs on the rollers at Field of Dreams and West Avenue. So we wanna make sure that is somehow not included in the no grilling ordinance as that is a huge part of our concessions. Um, and back to Chief's comment about uh, Google Maps and whatnot with EMS and fire, I actually handle the our active 911 app, which is what we get our dispatches on from uh, Central Communications. And we actually uh, submitted a request to Google to have the crossings updated. I did that probably about six to eight months ago when I mapped out the new fire hydrants over at the crossings and Google has yet to act on that. I actually last week reached out to a product manager at Google. So hopefully you'll see the crossings and the streets on maps, uh, I would say shortly, but going how, knowing how tech goes within the next eight months, but it was it was submitted. Um, I was behind one of those Google mapping cars uh, in traffic on 95 a couple of days ago. So he might, he might still be there, so. That's entirely possible, Mike. Um, question for Harry, the milling and patching of the cracks at Field of Dreams, do you know when that'll be? Because like I said, I do have a full parking lot there six days a week for our kids uh, up to about November 14th or so. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, Matt. Um, that'll be part of the punch list because when we find out the project. So I'm going to guess somewhere in the next uh, three, four weeks. But I will okay. let you know. I can All work right. it out. All right. Yeah, if they do it earlier in the day, you know, we start getting out there like five, six o'clock. So. Um, I'm sure they're not doing it then. Uh, and the the DEP mitigation for the uh, seawall, it's confirmed they only want a one-to-one -one ratio? Yep. Okay. So I'm doing a lot of projects with them where they're requiring two-to-one, even four-to-one, and uh, I'm glad to hear that. Don't scratch that yeah. open, please. Nope, nope. I'm glad yeah. to hear yeah. that. <laughs> and uh, finally, the paving on uh second street uh down over at the cul-de-sac by river's edge um i heard you say they're going to start doing that um next week uh, are they going to be 
right now in right in front of my driveway there's a mound about eight foot high of soil and the entire cul-de-sac is completely covered with dirt uh, so you know myself and the three other neighbors in the cul-de-sac it's just blowing around everywhere on everyone's property so you know i'm hoping they're gonna remove that soon and um you know the, the concrete guys have done a decent job but they you know they have cut a lot of cables the comcast lines they cut last week we were out for about four or five hours and comcast has an orange line just running down the cul-de-sac right now so i'm hoping they get that fixed so they're not having to dig up the sidewalk again right after they put it in yeah they the the, the, the cable was not marked out uh honestly and it was right below the driveways it was six of the feet um but yeah he did hit it in, in a few places that i understand yeah that that the one call they did it didn't mark out any comcast didn't mark out any verizon i put up one call in when i put a mailbox post in about two months prior and comcast and verizon didn't come out on that either um, so it's you know, something to be a look at. And those one calls were kind of stale when they came out anyway, since they were, you know, a good two months after they were called in, but, uh, you know, it's looking good. I can't wait for this, uh, block to be repaved. I know the neighbors feel the same way, but, uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Matt. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Hearing and seeing none, this section, the second session is closed uh, to the public. Uh, status of coronavirus disease, COVID-19 in executive orders. Uh, let's see. I haven't seen any new EOs that have come out. Uh, we could, status of the municipal building has not changed. And when are we going to open up our meetings there? I'm kind of, I, I, we were going to do it before September at one point, And then I know we decided to have the September meetings via zoom so that because of the the 200 ash street location conversation so i thought we would be opening up soon well that's the question i don't question. remember voting i don't remember voting to keep it zoom for october november december what have you well we were going kind of month to month or you know six weeks out um just for planning purposes and noticing purposes. So what's the schedule? What's the feeling of everybody? You want to get back in the room or? Uh, I like to get back in the room myself, but. We have to be ma masked in the room, correct? That's still correct, yes. Yeah. I thought that was why we landed on staying for a winter because some of us didn't want to be masked in the room. So I thought we decided for winter to be on Zoom. You kind of broke up there, Chris. Yeah, I can't hear you, Chris. Yeah, I was just saying, I thought that at that meeting when we decided to stay on Zoom for September, the reason we were going through the winter was because someone wanted to not be masked in the building. Am I remembering that incorrect? Well, I remember we wanted the plastic down and that's down. Right, the plastics down, but then we're still dealing with the acoustics and being able to uh, use. Well, the that's not going to happen. There, we're not. I mean, we're not going to have the acoustics for to have uh, to have it on Zoom and. Um, you can't simulcast. Yeah, we're not. We're not going to be able to do that this year at all, and maybe not even next year. Well, then so my, we can't. Opinion, my opinion would be we just stay on Zoom. We have so much more participation. Uh, through the Zoom function than we do with uh, being open to the public in, in town hall and having our meetings there. You know, to have two or three people sitting in the back and uh, appreciate those folks showing up, but here we have more voices and more people can chime in and participate in uh, what's what we're doing. Well, that, that's my opinion. Yeah, I appreciate your opinion, Fern, but I don't agree. Uh, we've reinvented the wheel with our public meetings. Uh, they've been uh, in the meeting room for uh, 250 years across the nation. And I don't think that this pandemic uh, should change the way we all live, the way we all go out to eat, the way we all go shopping. Uh, I feel very behind the times here with this group because everywhere I go and everything I see uh, on television, the events, the, the, the award ceremonies, the baseball games, football games, I don't get it. 
I just don't get the, the what we're doing here when everyone else is doing their thing. I think we're creating a bad, uh, and, you know, all the workers who are home working, not municipal, but in corporate America, they haven't gone back to work. They got empty buildings sitting there. It, we are, it, we, this is not what the taxpayers pay for is to sit on their computer and do Zoom. Senior citizens do not do computers and they do not do Zoom. Everyone I see on here may be tech savvy to do it, but I think of those seniors who uh, you know, still wanna come to a meeting and I disagree. We had more than three people. Uh, it depended on what time of year did we get people, but when people had an issue with their neighborhood or a question about themselves, they came to the meeting room. And I, I listen, I'm not gonna take a crack shot at anybody here, but I think this is going long enough. And I, I think it's ridiculous. I, I, when I see the football, 100,000 people in a the stadium, they're not wearing a mask. Uh, I have a friend who tends bar at the Marion Caters. They're all back to big events, no masks. This little group of 10 here is like, oh, let's still protect ourselves here. Stop, come on, get out of your house. Let's go back to the meeting room. John, I don't, dis I don't disagree with getting back to uh, life as being what was normal before. Again, I'm looking at it from a participation of having the public uh, participating in our meetings. And this, in my opinion, again, has proven to be more worthwhile unless, as you say, you know, we've had meetings where you know, there were real hot issues and the folks came, really came out in the, you know, those neighborhoods. But those issues are far and few apart where, you know, if that were to happen, we could do that, open up the, open up the town hall back again. Again, I'm, you know, or if we could do the, the Zoom or the technology piece from town hall, I'm all for that too. But again, I really enjoy having this participation of uh, the residents. Well, that's my opinion that, that we're not elected to hide behind COVID. We have to set an example. We have to lead and we have to, you know, start uh, the example by getting back into that meeting room and doing what we are elected to do. And I, 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 I believe that the people that have real issues or who want to join in on something we're discussing will come to town hall. I don't believe that they won't come. And um, I mean, we only had two people talk tonight, that two participants talk tonight. And I know that Matt and Bill Matalevitz or Liz Mattisett, they have all attended township meetings before if they have an issue to bring forward. Um, Liz has even attended our recreation commission meetings where we, we meet at town, we've been meeting at town hall. So we have people come to town hall for those meetings. Um, DJ came to town hall with his dad to present his Eagle Scout uh, project to recreation. So I don't believe that's the reason why we should stay in Zoom is for more participation. Uh, I really don't. And I think that, uh, we need to get back in the municipal building. The residents are paying for that building and we should start resuming our positions there. And that's how I feel. And I'm not trying to, I mean, Zoom is, hey, it's very convenient. If you're on vacation, you guys have signed in on vac from vacation. I know you have, and that's, that's a convenience, but I, I, I disagree with continuing this indefinitely. How do we get on that subject? I don't know. I brought it up. Okay. Because it's on the agenda. Review. Okay. Of <laughs> I want to have a, a get back in the room uh, um, and wear the masks, right? That's no, state. I don't want to wear a mask. I don't want to wear a mask, Mike. I don't wear a mask anywhere else in this world. That's I, know, I go to the food store, I don't wear a mask. I go to restaurants, I don't wear a mask. Okay, it's just certain certain places. You have your doctor's office doctor's and municipal. Office. Right. Why the municipal building? 
Come on. Come on. And then we're going to beat Halloween up, make all the kids wear masks while they go trick-or-treating. Come on. You know, folks are getting sick again, second time around with COVID. Um, but they're, they're not dying. They're not going into the emergency room. They're getting very sick. Uh, but it is something that we're all getting ready to take our booster shot or a second shot. Uh, and for the folks who never took a shot in the first place, um, you know, that's their private right. But, you know, we can't we can't get into that. We can't keep beating this up. Uh, is, listen, I, this is my last year. So, I mean, it's not going to affect me. I just see what it is affecting the world and our country by office buildings not being used and, you know, employees not wanting to get they're out of their pajamas and get dressed they're at home enslaved in front of their computers they're not allowed to get up they got cameras watching them it's it's not good for for us it's not for for uh it's just not i don't have a good feeling about this hey and it's easy i'll be honest this is very easy i sit at my kitchen table you know i can mute myself turn the video off i can you know it's too easy is it's it we're working on those marinades there for grilling right there John. Yeah. <laughs> for my raw meat I'm going to john's for dinner tomorrow night yeah um i've got my fish at fern sales well right now you know the masking is, is still required inside a lot of state offices still require a mask inside it's still going around there's still some high numbers in the county um and yeah, people are still getting- I'd like to ask Steve Raymond um, how other municipalities are handling their meetings. Are they still Zoom or what's going on, Steve? Do you have any feeling on that? So um, I, I think we have a few towns that are, are back live. Um, and then there are a couple towns that have the capability of uh, of, of a hybrid model where the, the council is in, but but residents of the public can either come to the building or join via Zoom. Mm -hmm. And and then we have a couple uh, public boards that are still still all remote. So it, it, it is running the gamut. Um, I think that most of our towns that are back in person are are masking during the their meetings. Um, I honestly, I, I would have to look and, and also talk with Doug. I don't know if that's a actual requirement or whether it's I know it's uh, been strongly recommended from the state but I don't know whether the it is currently a mandate for uh, public buildings or whether it's just a, a strong recommendation uh, but but again I so I think uh, hope, hopefully that hopefully that answers your question a little bit but I think it's it's still uh, kind of running running the gamut a bit as far as how other other towns are doing it thank you yeah the state uh, COVID-19 information page uh, uh, says in New Jersey, face masks are no longer required in most outdoor and indoor settings. Face masks, social distancing, other safety measures are still required in high risk areas such as schools, healthcare settings, public transportation, childcare centers, correctional facilities, homeless shelters. Uh, in addition, businesses may require uh, continue to require face coverings for employees and customers and guests. Um, Majority of state offices are open to the public, including uh, motor vehicles locations that continue to require masking of staff and visitors. And that's off the covid19.nj.gov page. So, um, I'd go another month on this uh, into October. Janice on the note on the noticing for zoom and public meetings were how far out are we well you are public we are published that um all of our meetings for 2021 are via the zoom platform so at, if you come back into the municipal building um we would have to get publish a, a notice in the courier and the Burlington county times that the uh, meetings, whatever meetings for the remainder of 2021 would be back at 770 Coopertown Road and no longer um, via chat. And Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we, I believe we have to give 20, uh, 48 hour notice on that, um, that uh, change uh, platform. Yeah, I think that would be accurate. Well, let's finish up October on Zoom and uh, at the uh, 
the meeting on October 18th, we'll uh, ask the question again and see if we can get uh, John Brown back in the room. Everyone okay with that? Or another idea? That sounds good. Sounds like a plan. All right. Thank you. Uh, correspondence, Mrs. Ward. Yes, there are several pieces of correspondence. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just for the record, we received a letter from the Department of Transportation announcing the uh, DOT fiscal year 2022 uh, local freight impact fund grant. And I believe, um, Harry, uh, that is not something that we would be eligible for, um, but it's just being entered for the record. We've never applied for a uh, freight impact fund grant but I um, wanted to put that on the record as correspondence. We also received a, an email from the Department of Community Affairs um, regarding the uh, American Rescue Plan funds, ARP as they're called, ARP funds. Uh, the project submission deadline, the first report was due October 31st. And they have the US Department of the Treasury has um, extended that deadline for the ARP, uh, first ARP funding report, project report to um, for uh, urban and cities to January 31st, 2022, and then April 30th for other entities. That's April 30th, 2022. So we do have ARP funds. I attended a webinar on the use of ARP funds and this particular webinar, um, the, um, the director, um, the state uh, that oversees the ARP funds participated very, very uh, high um, emphasis on infrastructure, uh, stormwater management, stormwater resiliency, uh, infrastructure projects, uh, uh, sewage treatments, wastewater treatment projects, um, and also um, any uh, a lot of infrastructure for um, improving health healthcare um, if, if uh, facilities, which we don't do at Delanco, but the county and higher levels. So we do have ARP funding. There are other categories that are eligible that we're looking at. So I have some phone calls to make to the state um, to discuss a couple of the categories. But um, I just want to let you know that DCA did put out an um, e email that those deadlines for that first project report uh, um, has been extended. And Harry, uh, if you'd like to add as far as those ARP funds and those project report deadlines, um, I would appreciate that. Thank you. But I do have some more correspondence though. But I wanted to give Harry an opportunity if he wanted to um, discuss the ARP funding a little bit. Um, yeah, well, there, there are um, a lot of infrastructure projects that are eligible, um, especially stormwater projects uh, that you might want to keep in mind. Uh, as you know, we need a lot of stormwater work uh, in town. So that's something you might want, want to consider and, and look at. That's uh, they qualify. Now, do we, if we don't have a project on the books uh, to report on by this first deadline, um, do we have to have, do we? We still have to file a report. Janice, I don't know. I'd have to check that. Yeah, yeah we're going to. Check I, I think that. that's the file report on what we've spent to date, not on what our plans are, what we spent. But I think we do have put together. There's another seminar I think you're going on to, Janice, and we'll start learning more about this and make a presentation to the governing body about some of the options. We received. Um, Go to this one next. A letter from Liz Matisat. Um, you see that uh, forwarded to you and in your packets regarding the uh, demolition of the building at the Canvas Factory. And she submitted some um, ideas for all, uh, alternatives to complete demolition, um, as did uh, Peter Fritz also um, submit some alternatives 
to utilize either brick or a piece of the walls in um, signage. Uh, we also received a letter from uh, email letter from Amber Perlmutter um, on behalf of the Delanco Environmental Advisory Board uh, supporting Ms. Mattisette's letter and ideas uh, for um, saving a good part of the uh, building at 200 Ash Street. And we also received a email and a letter from Bill Matalevich also writing to um, with additional points for consideration before the um, Township Committee goes ahead with demolition of the um, building at the uh, 200 Ash Street site. So I wanted to put those on file uh, on the record. We also, and the um, last piece of correspondence that I have, is a request to use the municipal building as a um, blood drive. It's a request from the New Jersey Red Cross requesting that we, um, I'm sorry, not the New Jersey, the American Red Cross requesting use of the municipal building as a site to run a blood drive. It was, um, uh, what they held one at Stylex, but they can no longer hold it there. So they're asking for space uh, at the municipal building to host the blood drive. We also, um, Mr. Heinhold also did um, offer uh, advice that um, if it was a joint township and Stylex, that a Stylex would have to submit a um, um, hold uh, insurance certificate holding the uh, township as additionally insure, uh, insured, uh, like a hold harmless agreement. So we do have the request from the um, American um, Red Cross to use the municipal building as uh, for a blood drive. They need approximately 900 square feet. And uh, also they need eight tables, 25 chairs for the event. So um, I don't believe we have eight tables. And of course the chairs, uh, we have probably sufficient enough chairs on the hard plastic, not, not the um, upholstered ones. So that, uh, and I spoke with her and uh, let her know to send the uh, email requesting it and that that was a decision of the governing body. That request was really a, a, a kind of a suitability re, uh, search that the uh, Red Cross was looking for. It wasn't for a specific date or anything like that, that, that something was upcoming. It was really a suitability uh, for what uh, what facilities might be in the area. So uh, just to clarify that. So Janice, could, could you, um, and regarding the ARP grant, is that something that we can apply to through recreation for the Eagle? to have our, I, I, I must have missed something about the, was there some, something about an ARP grant? The ARP, the ARP the, is the acronym for American Rescue Plan. Oh, okay, ARP. so yeah, we I missed it. We them to our ARP funds. Okay, <laughs> ARP I missed funds. it. And, and, uh, and yeah, Susan it's COVID related me. stuff. Okay, all right, it's not had anything to do with ARP, okay. No, no, I'm no, sorry, no, ARP. ARP. <laughs> ARP, not American yeah. Rescue Plan. Yeah, okay. It, it's you. COVID related, but they tacked on um, that you can use it for a lot of infrastructure to do with stormwater uh, resiliency and um, like uh, you know, uh, Harry said, and also uh, wastewater treatment, as well as health facilities and some other uh, areas that we're looking into. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Mrs. Lord? That is it. I just wanted to take the opportunity. I missed it during my report. Um, just to remind everyone that um, the general election this year, um, we have the early voting at uh, seven locations around the county. The closest one being uh, will be at Willingboro Public Library. And that is from October 23rd through October 31st. Um, that's the early voting that's brand new. And also uh, for those that receive vote by mail ballots, um, they can return them via mail. 
via in person back to the county or at a uh, vote by mail drop box location. And the two closest to Delanco would be Riverside and Edgewater Park. Delanco does not have a drop um, vote by mail drop box. It's not down in Cinnamon like it was last year. No, no, there are there's as far as the uh, vote by mail drop boxes, they are there are many, many more throughout the county. Um, right. The uh, early voting, I believe there's only seven locations. Um, we have a link on the township website, which will link you to the county's uh, election website with a lot of good information, uh, where those drop vote by mail drop boxes are located, where the early voting uh, locations are and those hours. A um, lot of good information on the county website and you can either go directly to the county website or link through the township website. Thank you. Hold on. All right, discussion items. Number one, Hickory Street Pump Station fence relocation letter from Delanco Sewage Authority. Uh, I think this is Mr. Schwab. Yeah, uh, I, I forwarded on to you what I received from uh, Sewage Authority. They need to change where the fence line is and so on uh, for the pump station uh, at Hickory. And one of the questions was, why are they asking? Uh, is it just to notify us if they own the land or do we need to formally give permission? We looked on the tax map and found no record of that being DSA property, but uh, Ben Weller forwarded on copies of correspondence that show that the township did give that land to the DSA in the early 1990s and that it should have been filed. So um, I'm looking uh, for Steve and Doug to tell us, do we do it? Is that just for an FYI? Or does the township have to take some uh, steps, either by motion, by resolution, administrative action, saying, yeah, it's OK? Because I don't think anyone's got a problem with it. We just want to do it right. And if, in fact, that deed was never properly filed so that it didn't get on the tax map, we need to solve that problem. Yeah, so I, I, Doug's, Doug's thought on this was, since this is within the DSA property, there's no formal action necessary um, on behalf of the township at, at this time. Um, certainly, I would agree with Rich um, that if if um, we you know we have to correct that that, that filing issue, although it's if it's um, a, if it was a deed from the township to the DSA, it seems like it might be their issue to to correct. Um, but but certainly between between the township and the DSA, that should be worked out so that, that everything is correct. But to answer the the most poignant question at this point is I don't there's no action necessary for the township at this point since the fence still is going to remain all on DSA property. Okay. So I just respond back to Ben and basically say that, thanks for letting us know. Unless anyone's got any questions, they'll proceed with what they need to do on their own property. Anyone have any yeah. questions about what they're gonna do there? No, I don't, but I mean, it looks like this letter sending the deeds was from 1966, yeah. 66, so, I thought it was 90, I'm sorry. 1966, yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess somehow someone's going to have to find out where that is. And if the deed was filed, then whoever did yeah, the tax should, map. Yeah, it should be recorded. On the tax map. So hopefully ERA can help us solve that problem. All right. Okay. Uh, next item two, uh, New Jersey State Model Ordinance for Electric Vehicles uh, Solicitor's Update. This is reference, a, it's in the, in the package discussion, uh, September 16th, the letter from uh, Mr. Heinold. Yes, so um, so Doug did send you guys a letter on this. I, I hope everyone's had a chance to look at it, but just to summarize his, his comments briefly in that letter, um, this is a, a little bit of an odd model ordinance in that, in that typically when the state adopts one of these model ordinances, um, they, they ask the townships to, to affirmatively adopt them. Uh, this is a little bit, different in that the, this adoption is automatically deemed um, deemed adopted uh, once once it was adopted by the state, which again is just a different from their normal procedure. Um, Doug, Doug felt it, it may be um, beneficial in order to to get it into your into your code um, to formally ad adopt the um, the the model ordinance as, as we would in a typical situation like, like we would in a typical situation. Uh, and that would also allow you, there are some um, 
you, you, there are limited changes that are allowed uh, under the under the model ordinance, and, and that would allow you to, to um, again, to, to codify the, them in writing if you guys uh, so chose to make any amendments to the sections of which you are allowed to amend. So again, his recommendation um, is that the uh, the township um, move forward and and uh, and actually formally adopt the model ordinance. But we do have to then review those reasonable standards. There's no point in adopting something until that decision is made. There's no time frame on this, is there? That's that's so. Right now, it, it's deemed it's deemed adopted. Um, but yes, you could you can you can. Um, Decide to amend those uh, those reasonable standards, and, and no, I don't believe there is a, is a time frame on on the on that. So, do we yeah. go through the general land use board, or we go through our planner or our engineer who who tells makes a recommendation on these reasonable standards? Yeah, there's there's very little. It's it was it's it's officially adopted by the state as, as Steve said um, September first, so it's already in effect as as we speak. Um, there's very little leeway that the town has that they can change on it uh, there's one one small section and it's basically you can require extra landscaping extra lighting extra safety things like that um, other than that there's not a whole lot that that the kind of you can put time limits on on how long a car can be there um, they're basically the only items you can change on it by this 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 ordinance um, it's going to require everyone to put in 15% um, parking spaces for electric vehicles. Uh, any site plans to come in for housing, same thing, 15% of the parking spaces have to be for electric vehicles. On new site plans, they have to install three charging stations, uh, a third of, a third of what, what is required, um, charging stations actually in. But then they also have to put in the other two thirds uh, ready made parking is what they call it. And that is putting all the conduits wiring and just not the electric station itself. Um, so that's all gonna be required by planning board and, and there's nothing that anyone can really do about that. Uh, again, the only thing that the township has any leeway over are, are minor items that, like I said, like landscaping lighting whether we want to require security whether you want to have time limits where they can park um, and while the cars are parked there they're supposed to be plugged in it's not just a parking space for electric vehicles it's a charging space so that's that's basically what the, the intent is hmm. why don't they just include that in the what's that arisa you know the state standards this is oh, a whole that's... separate deal yeah i, I so that's they're actually working on it as we speak as well. Um, that's where it belongs, doesn't belong in this it, format. It, it does, I agree. Um, and they're working on it now, but it's not in RSI as, as of yet. Yeah, RSI, that's right. That's usually where they put that stuff. So applicants know this stuff, and it's up to the general land use board and their professionals to know what's required. So when someone submits a site plan, they're in compliance with this. Absolutely. That's that's the key that plenty board knows about this because, like I said, it actually took effect September first, and, and I know of some of our towns and other places accepted applications and, and didn't require it because people didn't know about it. Um, Very sloppily done. But on these options, should somebody, you know, whether it's screening or lighting or these things that Harry mentioned, does somebody want to recommend that, or do we just leave it alone and not have if we do nothing, what happens? It, what, um, what are the requirements it, it, in those areas? It, it doesn't really have any requirements for, for, for that. That's what you can add. Um, there's nothing really you can take away from it. You can only add to it. Yeah, but if if site plan comes for the joint land use board, which shows these things, and members of the board say, well, we like screening here. We like unless you put it in your code, they can't require it. That's correct. They can suggest it but they can't deny a site plan because somebody is screening for their ev spaces That's then correct. we didn't include that in our ordinance so i mean somebody needs to look at this and decide what you want or there's going to be some conflicts or un unhappy applicants or unhappy jointly just board members just so we should be the joint lane use board uh 
to take a look at and get their input. And uh, I guess uh, Michelle or Scott Taylor to take a look at it also uh, as it would affect our town. I would recommend that because it's more of a planning issue than engineering. So right. yeah, I, I think that would be appropriate. Okay. Would that affect the uh, respective development uh, up on uh, Cooper Street there? One. The uh, yes, it, it, it will affect that. It was that. denied last month. Correct. They come back. Correct. When they come back, they should be, they're going to have to supply EV spaces. They, they already had that as part of their plan. Okay, great. They were anticipating. That's very good. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Good. All right, so it's going to be Kitty will put it on the agenda for the General Andy's board. As part of our discussion, uh, tomorrow night's meeting, when we have that section for discussion, yeah. I, uh, we can bring it up at that point. Find out how they want to review it. Correct. Okay. All right, move through that. All right. Uh, item three, 200 Ash Street building demolition salvage issues for bid specifications. Uh, some comments that came up at the uh, last month when we uh, had the public uh, discussion on 200 Ash and uh, there was a couple suggestions to retain bricks for a walk or a portion of a wall or a corner or something like that. and. Uh, um, and then some additional correspondences as Mrs. Lohr uh, read off earlier. Um, Mr. Fox, do you want to touch on that as far as how, how, you, how you do that and pluses and minuses to, to having provisions like that in a, in a demo contract or? Sure. Or how you um, do that? There's Anything's doable to start off. Um, it, it, it's just a matter of the price. If during demolition, you would want to save a small portion of a wall, it, it's going to affect the price a little bit. If you're going to save a larger portion, I, I was talking to a demo, demolition contractor today, actually who gave us a price on this years ago. And he's saying that, that he wouldn't want to touch it if he's got to save a portion of the building. Um, if you want to go in there ahead of time and identify objects, you have to put that in the specification and say the contractor self salvage this beam or, or, or that this brick or whatever you want to salvage out of there. You can do that. Um, again, it's going to cost you. And depending what it is, you know, that, that, that would affect your price of, of the demo. Um, there's nothing really salvageable in the building that would be worth that much to a contractor. So it's, it's, it's not like there were a lot of steel beams. There were a lot of steel beams contractors want to keep them themselves and, and recycle it. Um, there's not a lot of that in there. So on that end of it, 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 it won't affect your price. However, during the demo, they like to come in and just tear things down and get it done quick. So if you want to say something, again, we can do it, but we have to be strategic on, on what we're going to save. Well, it's difficult, you know, at this point, because there's, there's really, there's, there is no plan. Um, you know, the, back in June, we, we stated the intent to, to use the, the land as, as open space or parkland. Uh, we've not formalized that, uh, that, uh, that opinion, I guess. But as far as the building, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if if, if you retain a wall or a portion of or a corner, obviously now you you you, you plant you, you've left something there that now whatever subsequent plan you develop for that area now you've got that there and you got to work around it. Uh, even though you know we've got uh, we've got nothing in mind right now. Um, that's just you know a couple you know things off the top of my head on that on on, on this topic that uh, you know like a couple of people mentioned last last meeting and uh, and what's come in in a couple letters and emails and so forth 
So. Yeah, I've seen a couple of the suggestions, and and if you know if you want to save a, a small three foot by four foot brick section and to make a sign out of it or out of it or a monument or something like that, again that can be done. We have to specify that, and what's difficult on that is that it it, it may it may break, and how do we hold the contractor responsible for saving that four by three foot section? You know, there's no way we can hold them responsible for that. We can try, but, you know, unless we want to actually design something that would hold it together while he takes it out. Uh, I, I would like to, uh, those those emails that were sent uh, from the uh, environmental folks, Bill, Amber, Liz, I, I think they're, uh, they're interesting. And I would like to take the uh, next week to review them and look at them. Uh, you know, other than on my little phone, you know, but yeah. uh, I think they deserve that, that we look at those uh, presentations. Yeah, um, absolutely. There may like be something simple there. Oh, pardon me? There, there, there may be something simple out there that could be saved, but, but you know, I don't know without looking. I mean, we're not going out to bid on the demolition yet, are we? Uh, that's going to be up to the, the council. I, I, I was authorized to start the process, but that's up to when, whenever uh, the, the, the uh, committee wants to advertise. That's when. It, what's it what's your out. timetable on having specs ready for them to authorize? If there was no uh, no changes, uh, the specs could be done in three weeks. Um, if that's you know what what you want. Um, Harry, did you get a copy of the letter from Bill Madalevitz requesting that we have an independent structural assessment performed? I did not see that. Okay. That was from Bill Madalevitz's letter. Um, Richard, can we forward that to Harry, that letter, so he can see what Bill yeah. is recommending? Yeah, it just came in late this afternoon. Yeah. 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 Some of these emails, I, I did not get a chance to uh, read. Yeah, I, I did read them. But um, I think it would be um, I think it would be important to let Harry see the recommendations that Bill made. Yeah, let's table this. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll we'll put it back up on the uh, meeting in two weeks and uh, see where we stand. And uh, and if there's additional uh, investigation or study of the building. Uh, that gets warranted, uh, you know, we'll, we'll proceed. So, all right, we'll put it on for uh, two weeks down the road and uh, ensure Mr. Mr. Fox has those last uh, pieces of correspondence. Any, any other comments on uh, 200 ash? No, but can I, I, I need to backtrack on something Janice had brought up during correspondence and I didn't chime in. The uh, American Red Cross uh, wanting to do that blood drive. Uh, do, are we supposed to answer that request tonight? Uh, yeah, or nay? I thought they were, I thought they had to come in to see if the, if the, if it was suitable, Janice. Has she made that? Because this happened once before. Yeah. she And it wasn't suitable the last time that yeah. somebody... She's she um did email me the other day asking if committee has uh you know uh just made a commitment to one sponsor a blood drive two if the municipal building was available. But did she come in to see if it was suitable? Because no. one other time when I when I was looking for it for Dobbins because they could no longer do it there. Right. They were supposed to come in to see if it was suitable, and they never they never followed through with you. you know, I explained our, our courtroom and the carpeting, and uh, she, uh, you know, about how many people, how many square foot, and she, I guess they're desperate. They're really looking for sites to have blood drives. They're, you know, um, so I guess with COVID, it's harder for them to get sites, you know, willing participants for a site. But should we should we just tell them that no, because we're really not open yet? I mean, so that they're not. She did email me the other day saying asking if um, committee had made a decision to sp one sponsor to if they could have it at the municipal building. 
Well, the one reservation that, that we took, we discussed was the, the carpeting and uh, they had uh, the Red Cross had come back with, oh, we we'll, we'll, we put down plastic and coverings and things like that. Uh, uh, but it, it's, it still seemed a little, uh, a little different from their standard uh, operating practices that I've seen. They, you know, it always was in a tiled or hard surface floor that they've had blood drives just for um, sanitary and health purposes. And you didn't have to deal with a carpet if there was uh, something uh, that got away from them on the floor. So uh, I don't have the tables, um, but they well, we're just, we're not open right now. I guess that's the best way to no, do We it. should tell them no, we, we're not ready. We're not open, <laughs> but you need to answer them. Will do. All right, and uh, item four, uh, Halloween curfew reminder. Chief? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, if you, uh, just a reminder, the code uh, just refers to dates. Um, so the dates supersede any existing curfew. For instance, uh, Saturday, typically the, uh, the, uh, the curfew would be 10 p.m. But uh, because um, there's uh, the existing code of naming October 30th of a um, curfew of 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. And then the October 31st trick or treat specifically says it ends at 8 p.m. And curfew is 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. on October 31st. Since Halloween and Mischief Night uh, falls on a weekend, just to make you aware that uh, the code supersedes any previous curfew times. Um, how you want to proceed with trick or treat? I would just uh, my suggestion would be like last year, if someone's not comfortable coming, having people come to the door, offer an opportunity for us to supply them a sign saying they're not participating, and um, and just let people opt out that way. I think the church will be having first night again too. So I'll find out those details to announce that at the next meeting. The PDF for the uh, opt out for the Reese's Pieces opt out uh, will be on the website. If the committee um, wants to offer that, we will certainly put um, that on the website and also make Hard copies available in the lobby for those that don't have a printer. Okay. Any other questions or comments on that for uh, Halloween this year? All right. Do we need executive? Okay. All right. Anything else? Last comments? Otherwise, motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, good night, everybody. Good night, all. Good night, good night everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good Thank Great you. Frame. Frame. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Raymond.